Hi everyone, I'm Shaylin here with Reed Z. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about white room syndrome and how to fix it in your writing. So white room syndrome is basically when the setting is not described and the reader can't picture the setting. And so it feels like the story or the action or the scene is just taking place in a white room. The reader can't picture the setting and it ultimately just doesn't create very atmospheric or visually appealing writing and the reader will also struggle to feel grounded in the story. Now we do have some other videos on setting the scene that I will leave a link to to help you actually write this description. In today's video I've just got seven hacks that you can use if you struggle with white room syndrome to help bring more description into your scenes. Tip number one, pick more interesting settings. Sometimes white room syndrome happens because you're setting scenes in places that simply don't have much to describe. Someone's house, a mall, a coffee shop. These things are just not that interesting places. We go there fairly often. There's not much inherent tension or intrigue. So if possible, relocate the scene to somewhere more interesting or make something about that sitting more specific or a bit weirder. Maybe the coffee shop is built in an old ship and you're literally at sea. Or maybe the owner of the apartment that the scene is in collects lizards and they're just like terrariums everywhere and you can hear the crickets that they eat chirping from the cupboards. Instead of setting your scene in a mall, maybe you want to pick one very specific store in the mall that sells something very particular. It's much easier to include vivid interesting setting description if the setting is interesting. Tip number two, use props. It'll be easier to describe the setting if your characters are physically interacting with the setting. If your characters are standing there or sitting there not holding anything, not actually physically interacting with the setting, you won't have as many opportunities to describe the setting throughout the scene. Introduce props into the scene for more opportunities for description. And similarly to build on that, give your characters a task to do. Even better than just giving your characters something to hold is giving them something they have to do while they talk. This can make the dialogue more interesting as well as help avoid white room syndrome. And it's one of my favorite writing tips ever is just give the characters something to do. So instead of just sitting there or standing there talking, they're talking while they have a task they need to accomplish. This task will likely be tied to the setting. And so naturally you'll have a lot of things that you can describe and a lot of action meets that you can make use of throughout the conversation. Number four, keep sprinkling setting description throughout the scene. Though we usually set the scene at the beginning by including a little bit of setting description, you can let that description evolve throughout the scene as the character notices more. Maybe their emotional state is shifting a little and so it's allowing them to pick up on little details that they didn't notice at first. And you can use shifts in your character's mindset or emotions to keep threading new setting details throughout the scene. Step five, use setting as metaphor or symbol to link with the scene. This can just give more purpose to your setting and help you pick up which details are helping and aren't. If the setting has nothing to do with the scene symbolically, you may not know which details are actually helpful. But if the setting can somehow be a metaphor or a symbol for the character's emotions, their emotional state, how they're feeling, or can in just some way represent some aspect of the story, it'll be much clearer which details you need to and want to include because the details actually mean something. Step six is to vary your settings as much as possible. You might find you struggle with white room syndrome the deeper you get into a novel because you're relying on the same settings. I really experienced this a lot in a novel that I was writing because the whole book took place in a small town and even though at the beginning there was lots of fun setting description because the town was in the woods and I love nature description so there was so much to describe, by the end of this novel I'd kind of described the town and the woods around the town so many times that I felt my scenes were really thin with setting description. So what you want to do in this case is try to vary your settings. Instead of just having your characters go to the same locations they've always gone to, move them to new locations so you have new things to describe just like you did at the start of the book. And finally, step seven, create an emotional relationship to the setting. You don't just want to think about what the setting looks like, but also how it feels to the character and how it makes them feel. 
Do they have any memories attached to this place? Does it remind them of another place? And use those emotions to color your descriptions. The more a character cares and feels about the setting, the more they will be inclined to describe it and continue describing it throughout a scene and also continue describing it in a way that is impactful to the storyline. So when you're moving your character to these new locations, don't just ask yourself what's a new location, but also ask yourself what's a new location and how can it mean something to my character or what does it mean to my character? So those are some easy tips for avoiding white room syndrome in your writing and I'll leave some other videos in the description on writing descriptions and writing setting and related topics like that. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos from us. We've got new writing, editing, and publishing tips every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time, bye.